What's going on everyone? We finally have the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 in the studio. Now I have benchmarked this with a 5820K and 16 gigs of RAM. I try to keep the platform consistent. I don't think it matters as much what CPU we're using as long as we have a baseline and as long as we keep our tests consistent. So I did want to just throw one set of graphs at you, right, with just this cooler without anything else with which to compare. So that's why this video took a while to produce. I wanted to test this thing, uh, put it head to head against something like the Noctua NHD15 which is another beefy air cooler comparable to this one, both size and TDP, a couple of AIOs, and also a few smaller air coolers, just so you get an idea of what you're getting for your money. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk installation, and then we'll get into those thermals. Now to be clear, the Dark Rock Pro 4 makes no substantial cooling performance jump from the DRP3. Both are 250 watt TDPs. The big thing Be Quiet's touting with this one is the installation. It has been vastly improved from what they're saying, and we got a glimpse of it at CES, but we'll see in our own testing if that in fact is the case. The DRP4 has an MSRP of about 100 USD. It might be slightly lower than that in some cases, so keep a look out. You can find the product linked in the video description if you want to check it out after watching this video, but I want you to watch this video because after installing it, running my tests, there are a few things that you should know before you just jump on the bandwagon and purchase the improved Dark Rock Pro 4. We're still stuck with the same 250 watt TDP. Again, perfectly fine for an air cooler. It's not, it's not an issue. Seven large copper heat pipes spanning from the base up through some black ceramic coated fins, good for heat dissipation. And you do get two Silent Wings 3 fans. One is 135 millimeters in diameter and the other 120. The larger fan sits between the two heat sinks. This is where it belongs because a smaller fan up front means that you won't have as many ramp clearance issues. All right, now I want to talk ease of installation at this point because this is something that Be Quiet touted, especially at CES, and I don't want to say I was kind of misled, but I didn't know the full story because I didn't actually install anything myself. They had the Phillips head screwdriver that is included, by the way, with the purchase of the cooler. It's a very elongated one. It's magnetic, which is a good thing. You'll, you'll know why here in a second. Um, but the installation process is slightly, it's held back by a few design flaws that I want to point out, especially, you know, if they're willing to take this criticism to heart, implement this in the next generation. You guys, will, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So the holes that they've drilled here, these are the new holes that are supposed to make the installation much easier, right? You can thread the Phillips head screwdriver down and then secure the cooler to your socket with just two uh, Phillips head screws. Well, that's fine and dandy, but the problem is the only thing that fits through these holes is the Phillips head screwdriver. The screws themselves are too wide at the head, so you actually have to hold the screw underneath the plate and then somehow get that magnetic screwdriver to, to grip into the threads perfectly, at which point you can secure the cooler to the socket. I found that especially when building in a case, it was very difficult to get that top screw to thread into the Phillips head screwdriver, you know, poking through the, the cooler. Um, what they should have done was widen the holes a little bit so that you don't have to hold the screw under underneath the screwdriver. It just, it, it makes things so much easier. I actually dropped the screw a few times and had to flip my case around. Very frustrating to get that screw back out. Um, so if they widen the holes, and then the other thing is because these holes line up perfectly with the fan that would otherwise be here that I removed um, for the purposes of filming this segment of the video, uh, you have to remove the fan and you have these stupid, you know, little metal hinge things that are a pain to get off. You have to, I almost have to use like a prying tool. I can't even do it with my fingers. Uh, it, you know, and you're, you're bending the, uh, the fins when you do that. I've already, you can see I've already cut a few of them just by trying to pry off the middle fan. <laughs> it just holds this cooler back. If this cooler's ease of installation was improved dramatically like I expected it to be, you know, they touted this cooler as a massive improvement of the DRP3, then there would literally be no other competition out there. I think it already looks the best. It performs admirably, we'll get to that in a second, uh, but the ease of installation is just not there yet. So I'm definitely a little disappointed with the fact that Be Quiet's almost taking a sidestep here. It's an improvement over the DRP3, you know, getting at it from the bottom and trying to secure everything underneath near the heat pipes was a, a royal pain with the Dark Rock Pro 3. Uh, but the DRP4 really didn't expedite things much in, in the way of, you know, how long it took for me to install the cooler. I still found new problems, especially doing it the first time around. It just it wasn't ideal. Make the holes slightly larger, move them into the heat sinks, and then boom, you've got a perfect cooler all around for the price. I'm waiting on that. Cryorig does it really well. Rip Cryorig off, you guys, and then you've got an excellent cooler in the DRP5 revision. Now onto cooling potential and sound. Both of these are really important when you look for an air cooler. You don't want it to be loud, but you do want it to cool your CPU very well. Now, the way that we've kept things pretty mainstream and baseline here was I use the exact same fan curve for every fan in the case. It will remain that way for all the other 
the coolers you'll see tested in this video. Uh, and I, so it's just a normal fan curve. It's the normal preset uh, when you go into the hardware monitor uh, fan utility. And that averages around 40 to 50% utilization for each fan. So that varies per fan, especially when they're PWM controlled. You know, 50% for one fan might be slightly higher or lower in terms of RPM than another fan that's a little bigger. Um, and so that's something you need to take into consideration. And you're also going to be hearing the case fans when you hear the, you know, the overall sound of the cooler. That's something that I don't want to... I don't want to not include that because it's the whole system, right, that you should be considering for something like this. So we're going to start first with the audible tests and then we'll jump into thermals. So the first test was at idle and these coolers always impressed me from Be Quiet. It was virtually inaudible, about 20 decibels, which is, that's a whisper practically. Uh, and then when things heated up at around 64, 65 degrees Celsius under load, under full load with Ida64 on the CPU side, uh, the things really didn't pick up that much at all, around 25 dB. Something to keep you know, keep in mind though, you know, the, the loudness of these coolers is going to be based on the fan curve. So if we use a much smaller cooler uh, that doesn't keep temperatures as low, then the fan curve will peak in a much higher utilization for those fans, right around 80, 90 percent. So the system will get hotter and then the, the system will get louder as a result. That's okay though because we're still being consistent. If the cooler can keep things as cool as it is, you know, if this one in particular keeps things under, let's say, 65 degrees Celsius, then it deserves to be quieter and it deserves recognition for that because it is doing an adequate job dissipating heat. So that's what this test will revolve around. So just to recap again, that is 20 decibels at idle and then a mere 26 decibels under full load. Again, full load for the CPU, not necessarily the cooler. Unless you're doing some severe overclocking, this cooler should never approach 100% fan utilization. Now on to the temperatures, you'll see both idle and load temps. Again, this is not full load for the fans and the coolers. This is just full load for the CPU under Ida64 conditions. The CPU, by the way, is running at stock speed. So I think things turbo to around four gigahertz for the 5820K. But as long as things stay consistent across all coolers, it's really all we care about here. The deltas are what truly matter in relation to the price of each. So the DRP4 stayed nice and cool at around 33 degrees Celsius at idle. The AIOs across the board were slightly cooler at idle, but this is probably because the liquid inside the loops hadn't actually equalized anything higher than room temperature by this point. But under full load, this is where the Dark Rock Pro 4 shines. So not only was it the quietest of all the coolers tested here, apart from the Noctua and HD15, which was arguably about the same. The, the NHD 15 was slightly more audible in the sense that the, the tones and the fans were slightly louder. The Silent Wings 3 fans and the Dark Arc Pro 4 are slightly bassier. They have a lower tone. Um, so it really depends on, on which you're more receptive to, but both coolers are extremely quiet in their own respects and both cool about the same. The Dark Arc Pro 4 is actually slightly cooler in this respect and I think that might have to do with the positioning of the fans. So the DRP4's uh, fans on the cooler lined up perfectly with the fans in the case both at the front and rear so airflow you know in and out of the case was pretty much as optimal as it could get so very cool and quiet here just 26 decibels that's practically a whisper and then 65 degrees celsius at the highest temperature core core three for some reason was was peaking every now and then above the others but nonetheless that's the one we took because it was the hottest across all six of them and again 65 degrees is is nothing that's plenty of overclocking headroom we could have easily pushed this thing to maybe 4.3 4.4 gigahertz and for a you know, 5820k that's pretty impressive especially for an air cooler one other thing to note regarding our testing i was sure to use the thermal paste included with each cooler respectively so the noctua cooler used the noctua thermal paste included in the box the be quiet cooler used be quiet thermal paste and so on and so forth i have the cryorig h7 in here i used the cryorig thermal paste in that box and that's because i don't expect the consumer to have you know seven or eight thermal compounds laying around you might use just one thermal compound it might not be any of these listed um, but it does keep things consistent and it influences and encourages these manufacturers to throw the best 
thermal compound they can into their boxes so as to minimize you know variances in temperatures. So my verdict on the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 is surprisingly almost the same verdict that I had with the Dark Rock Pro 3. Things slightly improve with the installation side of things and that's really about it. The cooler looks as good as it did in the previous generation. It cools about the same as the previous generation did and it's also extremely quiet. It's got three of the four major components for an air cooler going for it. I just wish that the ease of installation was was there. It's really not yet. It's improved, but if you have a Dark Rock Pro 3, you know, you're perfectly fine. Even if you have something that's, that's comparable TDP wise, that doesn't look as good, you're probably best just sticking with that. If you're building a new PC for the first time and you want to go with air cooling, then I still do strongly recommend the Dark Rock Pro 4. Um, you, you're not going to have as, as difficult a time installing the cooler. You're going to be impressed with the way it looks in your case. You're going to be impressed with how quiet it is and how cool it keeps your CPU. So, you know, this is still a cooler I recommend. It's just not everything I thought it would be. Be Quiet probably doesn't want to hear that, uh, but I have to be honest. I expected more. They touted the installation process process as being so much easier and for me anyway it just wasn't unless I'm completely misunderstanding the installation manual which by the way is pretty uh it's pretty straightforward if you have you know AM4 or uh, Z370 or even X299 it's very straightforward how to install the cooler thanks to the manual if you haven't done this sort of thing before um, so it's nice that they included that and in several languages too I was surprised by how many different languages they had in the box with that again you can find the links to this cooler and it's because quite Dark Rock Pro 3 counterpart in the video description. If you want to, I'll leave a comment suggesting future comparisons between this and other air coolers. Do that in the comments below. Be sure to check those out as well. If you like this one, be sure to let me know if you give this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.